Today I'm in Corvallis in downtown. Been here many times before. I live here. Uh, but today I want to talk about something specific, which is cannabis shops. We actually have two right across from here. More on that later. Um, and $50 an ounce. So they're advertising. Uh, so one reason I want to talk about this is this has been legal in Oregon for nine years, uh, retail cannabis. And it's for us, it's kind of a part of life. But um, it's not common everywhere, so I just wanted to show what that looks like. And I'm not really, I'm not going to go inside. I'm just going to show them from the outside. I'm not going to really talk about the policy too much. I'm more, more going to show what it looks like in in reality. So this is cookies, which unfortunately does not actually have cookies. This is a dispensary. I heard that at certain points in the past, and I think I saw this, that there was armed guards here. Now it looks like they gave that up. And that was kind of a pretentious thing, I think, to make it seem more exciting. Um, it is an issue because there is cash on the premises and, and cannabis on the premises that there could be theft. But in general, it's not a big part of things. We're still in downtown and now we're on the south end of downtown and here we have Bluminati. So sometimes, you know, they do try to be a little bit cute with the name. But as you've seen so far, and we'll probably continue to see this, notice there's not a lot going on right there. And I think some of that might be the law. There is maybe a limitation on the amount of advertising. But also a lot of it is just, they're very minimalistic and they are not what, you know, head shop decor for the most part. So we'll see a little bit more about that in the next place we visit. So here on the edge of downtown, we do have Mary Jane Pot and Pizza. And in general, businesses don't try to get cute with it. And this one is kind of playing into like stereotypes. Yeah, you're gonna get the munchies, you want a pizza, you can have both delivered at the same time. I guess that's allowed, but in general, because even at low prices, cannabis generates a lot of money, companies don't need to get cute. Um, sometimes they sell swag or something like that. But in general, they're very minimalistic and they have one product and that's what they want to do. But there are a couple exceptions to that. And you know, there is kind of a difference. Some of them do lean into like a little bit of like head shop or stoner culture, but in general, they're all about business. Um, another thing to mention, I am downtown. According to the law, uh, you can't locate shops in residential areas or within 1000 feet of the school. So they're clustered in places where they can do that, such as downtown. Also, you have a lot of foot traffic and stuff, um, but they are also in other places. Also, and this is interesting, is that uh, from what I could see, there is a lot, they're supposed to be a thousand feet away from each other, and we saw two that were right across from each other. Um, rules about how consumers can use cannabis are very clear. Um, you can find that public information. Finding information about running the businesses, running the shops is a little bit more difficult. Anyway, so I'm gonna leave downtown and we're gonna see a little bit more of what the business looks like here. So across the street in this converted home is Mr. Nice Guy, named after uh, something in the movie Half-Baked, which you should all go and see. Um, and this looks like it's a residential neighborhood, but we're still in uh, you know, a commercial neighborhood. You can see there's like a McDonald's a couple blocks there. But this one does probably try to get more neighborhood traffic as opposed to like downtown where people are specifically going downtown. Um, so that is another, like some of them are downtown, some of them are semi-residential or neighborhood, and then some of them are what we're gonna see next. So right now we are along 9th Avenue, which is basically Corvallis's only strode. This is the strip, the sprawl. This is where you have your TJ Maxx your Michaels, etc., And also you have high quality, this dispensary here. So, um, like I said, also pretty minimalistic, a little bit of decoration, we have a pine cone. Uh, but in general, you know, if you look at this, does this store look any different than this stove and spa store right there? It really doesn't. Um, you know, it just looks like any other retail store you might find on a strip like this. So we're a couple blocks away, there's a Rite Aid, there's a Les Schwab, a Bimart, and here we have Top Crop. So this is also just along the highway. Um, one thing to note is that uh, because they're not located everywhere and in some municipalities ban them, there might be places where people are coming in from the north and they're just stopping right here before returning you know, to wherever they live in Polk County. Anyway, so the main point was, unlike uh, you know head shop history and unlike places like the coffee shops of Amsterdam, 
where the Netherlands is still illegal, um, you know, the marijuana businesses, cannabis businesses in Oregon do not at all lean into stoner culture. They're discreet, they're minimalistic. They don't really need to advertise or run gimmicks because they have a product that people are buying. Um, and it's just a normal part of life. Although it's not normal enough that, you know, when I was taking this video in a couple of places, I was a little bit nervous. Like, well, people think I'm casing the joint. Um, you know, so there's a whole bunch of poly DC discussions. Since cannabis has been legalized in Oregon, there's really been no serious, you know, desire by most people to rescind that. Um, so it is really just a natural part of our life here. Um, oh, guy's walking in, gonna respect his privacy. Um, it is just a natural part of our life here and, you know, whatever discussions we can have about it, I can show on the outside, yeah, it really does look just like any other business. Okay, I hope that was informative. It was kind of brief and basically my message was there's not a lot to see here, but I'm still kind of anticipating this might quickly become one of my most watched videos.